It had been a while since Agent Daniels had called upon Juriel and his crew. As with the times past, months had slipped by, possibly even longer. And as things often do with time, eventually the battles and adventures would mean that the crew of the Sovereign ship would split apart, that things would change. The bridge crew would be transferred into other commands or other adventures, and Joriel would be promoted himself. After becoming an admiral, Joriel would recommission an older Akura class vessel, designed specifically to have double duty as a carrier and an assault ship. He would rename it the USS Legend and would assign it as his flagship. It would be at the launch of the USS Legend that Daniels would contact him again. This time, the Sphere Builders, the entity that had created the Expanse in the 22nd century and tricked the Zindi into attacking the United Earth, would be attempting to build the Expanse again, but in an alternate dimension. Discovered that the Sphere Builders have been conducting operations in other universes. They aren't just looking to make changes in time, but in other dimensions as well. Their experiments in the parallel universe have produced results that will aid them in forming expanses here. We need to travel to that reality and stop the Sphere Builder research while we still can. Agent Daniels would request that Joriel and the crew of the USS Legend would make their way to the Delphic region of their own universe and then cross into the alternate universe. Because uh, apparently they can do that? Like the time agents don't only monitor time, but also other universes now, I guess? The USS Legend would use its slipstream drive, one of the new advancements in the 25th century that allowed the ship to move even faster than it could before. It would get to the Delphic region, and then, utilizing the temporal drive, it would hop over to the alternate universe in the 22nd century. Agent Daniels would explain that a Romulan ship had found itself in the alternate universe by accident at one point. Coming into contact with the USS Kelvin, the Romulan ship would destroy the Starfleet ship. This would change the timeline completely, causing the universe to be known as the Kelvin timeline. Though, I would question if Agent Daniels knew about this and could appear in different universes, why didn't he stop the Romulans and thus the creation of the new timeline? You know, let's let's just forget about it. Let's just just moving on. The USS Legend would detect both Klingon and Federation warp signatures. Captain Joriel would launch his fighters and make his way towards the sphere, which had yet to be activated. The Legend would receive a distress signal from the USS Yorktown. Not worrying about causing any damage to the timeline of this universe, the Legend would engage the 23rd century Klingons to assist the Yorktown itself. The Klingons would be no match for the Akira class vessel and be easily dispatched. Though, even with help, the Yorktown would find Klingons beaming aboard their ship and be overrun. Security teams from the Legend would beam over to assist the crew of the Yorktown. Using 25th century technology that the crew of the Yorktown would never question, Joriel would beam onto the bridge and assist in subduing the Klingons, ensuring that Starfleet stayed in command of the Yorktown. Once the Yorktown was secure, he would assist in identifying the weak points on the sphere and beam down with 0718 to plant explosives and destroy it. Joriel, 0718, and the Legend Bridge crew bravely fought through the Klingon hordes on the sphere, ultimately defeating them. They would come upon the envoy as he engaged in a dalliance with the sphere builders. It seems your alliance with the Klingons has been profitable. It has. Like the Zindi, they are eager for conquest. However, the technology you have provided destroys as well as creates. The resistance has been disruptive to our progress. Your promises appear thin, Envoy. I assure you, all is going according to plan. Nothing they will do will keep us from our goal. And yet, I see a familiar disruption has presented itself again. A minor nuisance. I suggest letting your Klingons do what they do best. I will deal with this disruption. It's time you learned that you cannot prevail, intruder. You will fall to ruin. Even with the assistance of the Sphere Builders, Joriel would defeat the remaining forces of the Klingons. 
He would determine what the Sphere Builders were ultimately doing, even in other universes that they had destroyed, and plant the spatial charges. They would all beam back up to their respective ships. The Sphere would begin its activation process, and this would start to have a negative impact on the ships, causing them damage. Though, somehow, the Yorktown would fare better than the Akira when it comes to damage taken. I mean, seriously, that was very, very annoying. Sphere Builder ships would warp in, and both the Yorktown and the Legend would fight them off. They would defeat the Sphere Builder ships and destroy the Sphere itself, preventing the Expanse. For now, at least. Beaming back aboard the Yorktown, Agent Daniels would take grievous wounds. Nice work over there. It was rough for a moment, but you both... Oh! What the... I... I'll see you back on the ship, sir. Most curious. I believe that wound occurred due to a temporal shift. Something has happened elsewhere. A question for another time, perhaps. In the end, you came through for us. On behalf of Starfleet and the Yorktown crew. Thanks. Indeed. Safe travels to you and your crew. And, unfortunately again, there would be no pushing for Daniels to tell what is happening. Ultimately, the crew of the Yorktown would thank Joriel and he would leave back for his own universe. And, the Yorktown and its crew doesn't question any of the advanced technology. And they weren't asked not to do reports or use scans from the ship and the weapons that the ship used, which undoubtedly would advance Starfleet technology. Nope. Lucky them, I guess. This wouldn't be the last interaction. At least one more conflict would explain everything that was happening. What was going on with Daniels? What was happening in this war of yesterday? But the Admiral wouldn't know about that for a while. The next time we see Joriel, he would be with a combined task force of other ships, comrades in arms in a fleet, staring down hundreds of Dominion ships that were swarming out of the wormhole bent on retaking Deep Space Nine. The USS Legend would find itself on the front lines of a renewed Dominion War. Hey guys, if you like this series, definitely let me know in the comments below. I can tell you that Perfect World does look at these comments, so I think I can talk them into doing a lot more if you guys give me a lot more interaction. Also, this Sunday, I will be live giving away free stuff for Star Trek Online, and even if you don't like Star Trek Online, we geek out and I talk about anything you guys want to talk about, and definitely coming to these live streams supports the channel in ways you don't understand. So guys, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'm going to see you on the next Lore Reloaded.